OpenAI and the other big AI vendors keep pumping one huge lie, even though all the data suggests they are definitely wrong. Sam Ellman loves to preach about AGI is right around the corner. We're about to give you AGI, even despite key leadership roles leaving the company, which in my opinion, if you really were right around the corner from AGI, I wouldn't be leaving. At the same time, their latest model just looks like GPT-40 with a chain of thought prompt, which is already a common technique, and just a really long output window. It seems like OpenAI is noticing the truth here which is that new models are plateauing in terms of how effective they are compared to older ones. So instead of shipping a GPT-5, that's probably only marginally better and probably larger and more costly, they're trying to make GPT-40 work better for different use cases. At the same time, Anthropic consistently produces better models, but even those are only incrementally better each time they launch one, which is a big gap from if you remember the GPT-2 to 3 to 3.5 days, those were huge leaps each time, and we're just not seeing that anymore. But this leads to three really interesting implications of where the AI ecosystem is going, and one really big unknown that I also think people are really, really lying about. The first interesting implication is that vendors are specializing. Sam Altman used to tout, good luck if you try and compete with our models, but they simply don't have the best models. They haven't for a while. And it seems they're acknowledging this, and they keep focusing time and specializing in consumer products built around the models. They make three quarters of the revenue from ChatGPT which they're investing in better native apps, better experience, better search, all the consumer experience around the model and conceding that they just don't build the best models themselves anymore. In fact, if you're a vendor using OpenAI's APIs, in almost all cases, you probably should use Anthropic, which is reflected in their revenue, which is 85% of the revenue comes from the API. They invest far less in their consumer products, even though the model is better, the user experience of their products just isn't as good. They clearly are not investing there. They're putting everything in just being a few percent better of a model, and that few percent better really can add up to make better products built on top of these foundation models. And so if models aren't getting that much smarter, what will continue to change? That leads us to the second interesting thing happening. More and more vendors are building specialized hardware for LLMs, which can drastically increase the speed of inference. New chip companies like Grok and Cerebras are able to do inference three to five times faster than typical GPUs. But the interesting key here is they're not just five times faster, they also can evaluate three to five times cheaper because they're simply much more efficient. So when we can make AI products that are equally as smart, but massively faster and cheaper, that can unlock a lot of new use cases that were just prohibitively slow and expensive previously. The third implication is that vendors are gonna get a lot better at figuring out how to use LLMs, even if they don't get that much smarter. Behind me is an example of a launch title for the Xbox 360. Perfect Dark Zero came out when the Xbox 360 was brand new, and the graphics are fine, like it's representative of that era of the console. But what's fascinating if you remember launch titles versus late in a console series titles, on the same exact foundation, there was no change to the console or hardware itself. Years later, we see games like this. This is Halo 4, and this looks like a whole different generation of console, yet this is on the same hardware as the prior game. What happened? Over those years, developers got way better at optimizing how they use this technology. Game engines found more and more clever approaches to get the most out of what they had. This is what I think will happen with LLMs. Those who make products on top of LLMs will get smarter and smarter at getting more of the smart parts out of them and avoiding the dumb problematic parts. I don't think we're anywhere close to AGI, but I do think we'll see major leaps in product quality just by using the LLM technology better and better. And then the last thing you might ask about is what about agents? What about Devin, the AI software engineer that made all these crazy claims, raised a ton of VC money, and just kind of disappeared off the radar? Realistically, I think the models are just not smart enough yet for this to make sense. Even in Anthropic's own announcement post, they cited that Claude with computer use only has a 14.9% success rate. I don't see any world where we give AI agents the ability to act on our behalf without them having something more like a 99, if not 100% success rate. In all of my experience in testing, the models are not smart enough to be able to accomplish autonomous tasks. They need a human in the loop, otherwise they derail quickly, and those small errors compound very rapidly. This is why you hear a lot of talk about agents, but I don't think you see anyone actually using them. And I think the problem goes back to this. The models aren't smart enough and they're not getting smarter fast enough. The hardware is getting faster, the vendors are getting specialized, the products will get better at using them, but I think anyone who thinks agents will start doing their day-to-day -day work for them end-to-end -end are wildly underestimating the size of gap LLMs have today and how one small mistake in a chain of processes can derail an agent so quickly that I think they're far away from actually being useful. But that's not to say that some form of agents won't exist in the short term. I think mini or micro agents do show a lot of practical value. For example, the open source micro agent project that can take a set of tests 
and write and iterate on code until the tests pass. Or in the case of Builder.io and our product that uses AI to turn Figma designs into code, we've actually found that rather than using one big traditional LLM, we can use a series of smaller agents that communicate with each other to have a way higher quality output. By using a series of smaller agents in combination with self-trained models, we found that you can both increase reliability, speed, and accuracy compared to just plugging in something off the shelf. These are the types of techniques that I think will bring us to the next generation of our era, where even if the LLMs don't get smarter, or we don't have personal coding assistants doing all our work tomorrow, we sure as heck will keep getting better and better products that are more reliable, whether it's automating tedious work like converting designs to code to all kinds of other interesting use cases around content generation, code generation, co-pilots, and other interesting products you keep seeing come out. And just be sure to pay a keen eye towards which ones are people actually using versus what are gathering hype but actually don't work. So while I think there will be a lot of noise in the market, I think we have a lot to look forward to as well.